One of the more interesting forms of testing is mutation testing. With mutation testing, what happens is we inject a single defect, referred to as a mutant, into the source code, and then run our test suite against that code, looking to see if the test suite is capable of detecting that mutation. If it is, we say that mutant is killed off. If it isn't, we say that it's a live mutant, and we continue on testing. With mutation testing, we essentially end up assessing the quality of our test suite. A good test suite will tend to kill off most of the mutants. A bad test suite will tend to not kill off most of the mutants, or will leave a substantial number of the mutants live. One of the tools that does mutation testing, especially in the Java language, or specifically in this case in the Java language, is a tool called PitTest. Pit, as we're seeing here at pittest.org, is a mutation system that essentially goes through and injects these mutants into the Java code, modifying the Java bytecode, running the either testng or junit tests on the code, and seeing what happens. When all is said and done, a report is given showing the results. In this video, what I'm going to do is demonstrate how to use this tool with the IntelliJ format. So to begin with, we need to import our existing project into our IntelliJ environment. So we'll start by importing and browsing to find our location of the source code that we want to bring in. So I'm browsing here to my demonstration and I select the directory where my source code lives. This will bring up a dialog box that says I would like to import this from existing sources. And my source name or my project name is going to be pit test demo IntelliJ. And in my case, what I want to do is set the directory like so. The project format I'm going to leave is this idea format, the default format. I want to bring in, in my case, both the source and the test folder. That's going to be brought into my project. Right now I'm not going to worry about any libraries. And the modules are going to just be my source and test folders. I don't have any frameworks right now. And so I will bring this on board and in. When all is said and done, the project will open itself up. and we'll have everything on the screen like so. So we can see that I have in this case a calculator test file. So when the code is opened up we'll see that I've got a few problems namely the testng test environment has not been brought into this project. So to fix that I'm going to bring in testng onto the class path using the testng that is present in the IntelliJ IDEA distribution. That brings that in, and our project then should be buildable, unless there are problems with it that I am missing. Oh, there's an extra import that we do not need in our code here. So now I can rebuild this project, and I will have all of my tests all set up and in here. I can then take and, in this case, run the tests. I'll run all of the tests that exist on the code, and we see that in our case, all seven of the tests pass. Compare, divide, multiply, positive, simple, add, subtract, summation. So each one of these tests does work appropriately. So now that we have the test cases properly running, we want to start doing some mutation testing. Now, the steps that we're going to do here only need to be done generally once, which is to set up the plugin for pit test within IntelliJ. To begin with, from the pit test site, we need to go and download the material or the installer for the pit IntelliJ plugin. That is available here on this site there are multiple versions and you can see when they've been released. So we will download this and save this into a location here. I have a folder called vtemp that I'm using. So now that we have it downloaded, we can switch over to 
our IntelliJ environment and go to essentially our settings which will pop up here momentarily and on the settings essentially select plugins here and this is a list of all of the plugins that are currently installed in our environment. What we would like to do in our case since we have downloaded this is install a plugin from disk. This will bring up a dialog box like so. We can browse to the location where our plugin is at which is right here. Click OK and then click on apply and OK. Then what we'll have to do is restart our IntelliJ environment. So here we can see that IntelliJ is now restarting and the pit test tool if I go back into this same file and settings here closing this out like so we can see that under settings and plugins if I scroll down here the pit mutation tool plugin is now installed. So now that I have the pit mutation tool installed what I'd like to do is actually set it up to run these tests. So what I need to do is go into here and select run and edit configurations. So what I want to do is add a new instance of this tool. So I'm going to add a new configuration of the pit runner in my case I would like the target class to be demo which is the package in which all of my code lives these are my source and my report directory and I want to add in my case one more instruction here what I'm going to be adding is the list of mutators that I would like to have now we do not have to do this but by doing this we get all of the possible mutators that I'd like to run Full details of this are available on the um, pit test website, but suffice to say these are the mutators that I would like to run on this piece of test code. And I'm going to call this instance of running here calculator test pit test, which is the name of it. And I will apply, create it. Now if I go to this run window here, we can see that I have this run configuration ready for me to do mutation testing on. So I'll run mutation tests on this now. So I'll start this running. This will take just a few moments to get started. And it will start. It takes just a few moments to go through and we see all of the things that happened here. In our case it generated four mutants and they were killed. It generated in this case one mutant and it was killed. Let's take a look at this in a little bit more detail in a browser. So I can open up a browser and in the browser window that I have right here we can see the full report of this. So we had one class that was tested, it was called demo and if I drill down into this it was calculator example.java that was tested. We can see which mutations survived and which ones did not survive. So in our case here what happened is scroll back up here because I didn't want to do that we replaced integer addition with subtraction that was killed replaced return of integer size value with zero that was killed. So this one was successfully killed off the mutants or the mutations related to that addition operator here. In the subtraction scenario one survived where we replaced integer addition or subtraction with addition. They replaced the return of an integer with x equals 0, 1, or 0. That was killed. So in our scenario, replacement of integer subtraction with addition, that survived. In this particular case here, in the summation operation, while start is greater than 0, one survived comparison check with true timed out. So in that particular scenario if this is replaced purely with true if you think about it we end up in an infinite loop. That's going to time out. That's something that may happen with a mutation. 
Um, the other ones were killed out. So changed conditional boundary, that particular one survived, which probably was while start is greater than or equal to zero. Again, that ends up in a scenario that's probably a equivalent mutation. Here, whoops, we had seven different mutations that occurred. Conditional boundary, that survived. So is positive, my guess is re changing that to greater than or equal to zero also survived for the is positive example. Okay, so those are all different mutations that are surviving the test cases. How can I go about fixing something? So I'm going to start with my subtract method. If I go into my calculator tests here, we can see I've got a test subtract where I take 0 minus 0 and expect 0. Okay. What I'm going to do, I'm going to call this test subtract 0 and I'm going to make another copy of this method or ideally what I would be doing would be using a data provider or something like that and in this case I'm going to call this test subtract 1 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and subtract, take 5, subtract off 3, and expect 2, like so. So there we go. That is our assertion as it is structured here. And if I go from here, now what I can do is take and run this particular test here just to make sure it works properly. Oops, I should have ran test 1, not test 0. That one ran properly. This one runs properly like so. So those two work. Now if I want to try and kill off, for example, is positive, let's see how I'm testing that. So is positive, multiply, divide, summation, test positive. Now you'll notice that I'm not exactly in this scenario testing using good AAA formatting. I'm actually doing multiple asserts because of the complexity of this code. This is not tremendously complex code. These all really should be done with data providers. But in this test positive, what I'd like to do is maybe change these so that instead of this being 2 and negative 2, they're right on the boundary. So maybe change this around to be boundary value analysis instead of equivalence class testing. So I'm going to pick 1, negative 1, and actually to really clear it up I also want to test zero. Zero should be positive. Okay, so that will test my results here. Um, but here's an interesting thing. If you notice how my code is structured here, if I run this test, run test positive, and I'm doing this for a reason, what we'll see is the test positive actually failed at this line here because if you look at the code, going back to this version of the code, it's greater than zero to return true. That's actually a bug. Zero is a positive number. If I now try to take and run these tests that I've got here with the pit test tool, so I go to my run menu again and run with pit test. Pit test is going to run, but what it's going to do is give me an error. All tests did not pass without mutation when calculating line. Mutation tests require a green suite. In order to do mutation testing, your test suite needs to be completely valid at the start. This one was not because it had that bug in it. Now I'm going to go fix that bug actually in the source code, like so, by going down here and making this one here and is positive, B greater than or equal to zero. And then I will go and again run my calculator pit tests. They will take just a moment to run here. All the mutations will go through. 
in just a moment we will have the results being done here and we can open these up again in a browser so here are my new results that I have and we see that my mutation coverage if I compare with what I had previously previously 30 out of 35 were killed now 32 out of 35 have been killed off I can browse down and we will see my subtraction mutation is now killed off and this one is now killed off these ones that are pink still are surviving and I would add additional tests to try and kill them off if possible so at this point you've seen how to install the pit test tool in your environment to work with it you've seen how to use it with IntelliJ you've seen how to take some of the tests that fail or some of the mutations that survive how to actually go in and modify test cases to take care of them so that brings this demonstration video to a conclusion